Steve Gamash here with another Chef Knives to Go quick look product review and what we're looking at this time what we have on the table is the Kato VG10 Sumenagashi or Damascus Wa Guto 210mm knife. So these are made by Hiroshi Kato. Mark has a couple of different Kato blacksmiths on his site so this is Hiroshi Kato and um, the core steel is as mentioned VG10 full stainless steel. The heat treat on this is about 61 and 62 Rockwell so it takes it to a little bit higher hardness which should extend edge retention a little bit. The construction is a multi-layered etched cladding of probably nickel uh, stainless to get these dramatic layers that's how they do that different materials and so they etch that so it really pops but it's a multi-layered stainless cladding over the top of that uh, VG10 core steel, so it's a very dramatic look, and um, we'll get a close-up of that in a little bit, but the weight on this is about 5.4 ounces, 154 grams, and the dimensions and weights and stuff will vary a little bit from knife to knife, as they're handmade, but uh, this one is about 217 on the edge, so a little bit oversized, about 8.5 inches, and about uh, a little over 14 inches overall length. 364 millimeters. The spine thickness, these are thin knives. Uh, everything in this line is thin, so it's about 1.9 coming out of the handle uh, above the back of the blade, and pretty much, just pretty much holds that uh, all the way down. There's not really much distal taper, it's just the same throughout. Uh, we'll get a close-up look. This does not have much taper at the tip either. The tip is actually pretty stout, so you'll trade a little bit of performance for some robust uh, characteristics at uh, the tip. So it's not a super skinny tip. The blade height is 49, uh, excuse me, 47.9 millimeters, almost 48 millimeters. Again, those are very little bit. And the handle's just a kind of the standard handle you see on a lot of different knives. These are the oval ambidextrous rosewood with black pack of wood ferrule, stabilized wood product. Pretty clean handle install, nice tight fit and finish on the handle and sealed up nicely. Although I usually still like to put something on the very end there where the tang meets the handle, uh, face of the handle there, just... Uh, to seal that up a little bit more. I usually use two-part epoxy. Some people use beeswax or different things you can do. Uh, circumference on this handle is about three inches or 76 millimeters where this uh, ferrule meets the main part of the handle. Pretty standard uh, size. And this has um, kind of almost a masakage style um, sweep where you've got the curve coming out of the, the emoto or neck into the choil, the back of the blade, and then you've got a little bit of a back sweep on the heel a la masakage. Um, let's take a close-up look at it. So if you want a dramatic looking knife uh, to make a statement, this is one of those styles. Real easy to see that. You can see the core steel at the edge there. So the Sumenagashi refers to these layers here. It's kind of a layered, I think it stands for paper layers. It's an art, the art form, I believe. So here is another view of the left side of the blade, and what's cool is they do give you, uh, they do, the maker does put hand chisel kanji on this, and uh, it shows up, if you get the right angle on it, it really does pop off the finish, so that's, that's neat. It doesn't get too lost if you hit the right angle. Obviously, different angles shows up differently, but in the right light, it shows up really nicely. And you can definitely see where the grind of the knife kicks in. This is a, a neat effect. It's a nice looking knife. Uh, they are thin at the edge, uh, they are also thin at the spine, we already covered that, but um, it's hard to see it's so thin, but um, you can see the construction of the blade, you can see the layers there and the core steel showing, so they don't cover the spine with the cladding, which a lot of knives do, so you can kind of see almost a cutaway effect, it's pretty cool. And then these are pretty thin at the edge. They don't get thin at the very edge, so they should have pretty good product separation capabilities. And here's the spine again in terms of thickness. You can see just pretty much the same all the way down and then holds a lot of that thickness to the very very end. So again not a lot of distal taper so you're not going to have a little laser thin tip there but you do. The trade-off on that is it's pretty robust. More material there. Let's look at it on the cutting board. Let's see what our profile looks like. These can vary a little bit from knife to knife, but this particular one, just kind of a gentle belly throughout. Not a whole lot of flat. A little bit on the back, but not a whole lot. It kind of flows in about that much flat spot. And then 
gentle belly and then a little more, more belly towards the tip. So let's see how I can get. So this one I can get pretty high on before I start digging the tip. And again, your knife, if you get this kind, this model, it might be slightly different than this one. But I can get pretty high on this one. So I'd say this rocks really, really nicely. In fact, that's probably its strongest point is rocking and something with push-pull cuts, some motion in your cuts to kind of utilize that curve at the edge and just a touch of flat at the back. So definitely not a chopper's knife where you like a lot of flat, but fairly, fairly all around, but probably maybe an e emphasis on rocking. So there's our profile on that knife. So just a real dramatic looking knife, a little bit higher hardness VG10, which should increase edge retention a bit. And uh, just a cool looking knife. So there we have, oh, and let me, I'm sorry, I forgot to do the balance point, almost. So there's your balance point on this. Again, this is highly oriented towards the pinch grip. You can see it's actually probably a little in front of my pinch grip balance point, just by a touch. So you get just a little bit of weight forward uh, balance bias on this for a little bit of power, but yet it's still 5.4 ounces. It's still pretty darn light. So there we go. Snuck that in there. Out of the box edge, about five, maybe out of six, uh, or excuse me, five or six out of ten. And you could get this sharper. You might want to have chef knives to go sharpen it for you if you're not a sharpener. Uh, they do charge for that, but it would give you an idea of just how sharp a knife could be, give you a good reference point, and also what the edge retention might be on a really well sharpened out of the box edge. So anyway, there you have the Kato VG10 Suminagashi Wa, Japanese handled, Guto 210 millimeter knife.